one December night in the small town of Versailles, Kentucky, it was unusually cold and damp. One of its citizens, Curtis Donovan, had to go for an errand and needed to stop for gas. What happened next, you won't believe. All right, cool. Yeah, I'll be there in a minute. Well, I'm about to go get some. Yeah. Well, I left my house. I was going to do some laundry. You know, we were washing our kids' clothes. Uh, our washer went out. I was headed to the gas station to fill up with gas before I went over to my grandmother's house to, uh, you know, wash the laundry or whatever. I got to the gas station, you know, I pulled up, shut the car off, left it on where I could listen to the radio, and uh, I got out of the car talking to my grandmother, you know, just grabbed the pump, put it right in the little uh, gas nozzle, and uh, started pumping, just started straight started pumping the gas, you know, talking to myself over and got right back in the car because it was real cold. Sat in there, talked to her for just a, not even a brief minute, you know what I'm saying, and then listened to the radio, and then turned around, opened the door, you know, got right back out, leaned up against the car, grabbed the gas nozzle, and then that was just, just like that. In just a flash, flames shoot out of the gas tank. Curtis narrowly escapes getting burnt. Further damage is avoided by the quick thinking of the store's manager. Well, we were working, it was a Sunday night, and things were kind of slow, and I was back in the kitchen cooking, and I had a guy here that wanted some food, and I made him a sandwich. And then I can see something reflecting off the side of my glasses. And then I looked over out the window, and you could see flames just shooting up to the canopy. So immediately, I just turned around, hit the red emergency stop button. By hitting the emergency button, all the gas lines are shut down. By the time the firemen arrive, the car is engulfed in flames. So what caused the fire? After looking at the surveillance video, the fire department concludes it was static electricity. Um, fire behavior needs three elements. Uh, we call the fire triangle, which is fuel, heat, and oxygen. Uh, when conditions are right, you know, static electricity from the clothing can produce the, the heat that is needed for the fire, that electric spark, which is going to mix with the vapors from the fuel. The heat was caused by the static electricity coming in and out of the vehicle from his clothing. You know, that was our conclusion. To Curtis, static electricity is the only plausible cause. Me personally, I mean, I think it was static electricity. I mean, but it, I didn't feel the arc, you know, like when I grabbed the gas pump, usually when you touch something with static, you, know, you feel that little initial shock, but everything happened so fast, you know, just as soon as I grabbed it, the flames just, it just engulfed it. It's just like that. So you're fueling up your car. What do you do? Static electricity is real. Be sure to ground yourself by touching the metal of your car before reaching for the pump. Don't carry a cell phone when pumping gas. Cell phones carry electricity, and anything that has electricity running through it has the potential to cause a fire. Turn your car off when pumping gas. A running car carries electricity as well. While Curtis learns a valuable lesson, it comes at a hefty price, his car. This just looked like a brand new car, but it looked like a car coming down the assembly line. There was no seats, no interior, no nothing, just bare metal. The memories of this shocking event haven't kept Curtis from continuing to pump gas. In fact, he still goes to the same place. Oh yeah, he's a regular customer. He comes in all the time, before and after the fire. He's still getting gas and still spending his money here. He's a good customer.